So I'm back, the man with the horns, Richard Carson Stewart in La Tromba studio. So what's important here, once again, comparing a natural trumpet to a modern trumpet with valves, so that you understand a little bit better. I'm sure there's a lot of college students, I hope there's a few college students that have been tuning in trying to figure out what this guy is about and why he's doing that. And uh, this kind of a piece is a very important piece to be able to... Uh, present and develop in your, you know, concerts and, and uh, in, your, in your classes and for your final examinations, for example. I've added a few ideas of uh, em embellishments that I don't always use. They just, sometimes I just uh, add these things be just for a point of reference. Um, this is quite an interesting sonata, and it's one of my favorites. And uh, you can play it also uh, on the natural trumpet without, without any valves or without any holes. It's, it's a question of the consistency of how these things. This is a natural trumpet also in C, and uh, it has a Tarasi uh, uh, tuning lead pipe. This goes back and forth, so you can do things. But it's basically, with this Tarasi, these Tarasi things are not for playing more complicated things like that, but more for playing uh, chorales in Bach cantatas and whatever. I'll talk about that a little bit later. I hope that will be interesting for you and compare that perhaps to a piccolo in high C, which I don't many people, this is in high C. So this, that natural trumpet there on the chair is four times longer than this. This is half as long as this C trumpet. Well, let me just play a few notes on that. This is a, a very seldom instrument, not made anymore from Reynolds Schilke. It's a, a P6, the uh, Reynolds Schilke in Chicago, Illinois. Yeah, this is a very old trumpet, 5,000 series. I think they're about by 60,000 or something like that by now. Anyway, so the third valve slide moves, and I can set it out here, and that allows me to... So I can actually play the Brandenburg on this and be able to play down to the low F. And the Brandenburg is, is written for the F natural trumpet, or maybe it's for, more for the trumpet to catch you. But we'll talk about that. There's a trumpet to catch you hanging here. And this is also in C. The intonation uh, that I've discovered to be able to use with hand reflection is also a comparable thing, but I'll get to that in a second. Let's just, uh, I'll just play a little bit of this. This again, the Sonata Prima per Trombetta Sola. Um, the first note is then an octave lower for, I'm thinking an octave lower, or then use the valve section. It sounds the same though. <laughs> Sorry. I don't want to waste time with this stuff. Okay. I'm going to have to turn off this uh, ventilator because it's creating too much vibration in the air. And so you think that I'm suddenly have a vibrato like the solo E flat cornetist in the Salvation Army Band. Okay, here we go. Really need to put some first valve, some oil in the first valve. I mean, you just talking about oiling. Somebody said, "Hey, I've never seen anybody oil valves like that." Well, why not? You don't take the pistons and out of the out of the motor of your car when you put oil in it. I put oil in the lead pipe. It cleans the lead pipe. It goes right into the valve. Don't have to take the valve out and out or pull a slide or anything. Right into the lead pipe, and I just mix it through. This is straight pipes here. And you see, I'm, I'm using another valve combinations. Instead of one and three, I'm using two and three. But I have here half tone, one tone, two tones. Now I could play this this way.
if I intonate here, move it back and forth, or I can pull this slide right out, and it's then two tones, and I use the valve combination two and three, and get the same effect as if I'm using one and three. So one tone, and if this was normally just one and a half tones, it would be then two and a half tones. Now I have, <coughs> in this direction here, I just use the combination here, half tone and uh, two tones. So. Now, there's you know all kinds of questions about what kind of color of sound that you're going to get with the instrument or whatever. Uh, this is a, a really hybrid instrument. It has the possibility of me also being able to change the bell, and I can put, uh, for example, a wooden bell on it. Mm. Here we are. I don't know if this is the A or the B flat bell. Let me have a look. See here. Here's the another one. Yeah, this is the B-flat bell. This is a you know, protected wood now. A clarinet maker in Bamberg made these bells for me. Segelke. Very nice guy. Anyway. No, I'm too low with that. So this bell is too long for this instrument in this way. I'd have to change this pipe here to use this bell because I can't change this bell. But anyway, you get the idea. Oh yeah, you can see how much shorter that this bell is than that. Quite a lot. So it doesn't seem like very much, but you see even just the difference in that, this bell and that bell, you could hear that I'm almost a quarter of a tone lower here. But I'll just play it even sounding the way it does so you get the idea of the sound of the bell. It's not in C anymore. It's in somewhere between B natural and B and C. It's lower. Now, interestingly enough, if I'm going to play with a cembalo in original 4, uh, four, four, four 15 intonation, which is Baroque intonation, I can use this bell because then you're playing a half tone lower and it tunes out of the bell here. So let's have a look, see how close we are to the intonation that I just spoke about. Well, instead of at 442, I'll just go down to 415, zoom, 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 and be able to check out whether or not that's right. Set this up here in the hopes it doesn't fall down. And you can see if the red light goes this way, you're too sharp. If the red light goes that way, you're too so uh, low. And the green light means you're in, right in the sweet spot. So it's now tuned. The intonation would be 415, A415, which is Baroque intonation, or from that period, <coughs> 1750, 1720, about there. So I'm a little bit flat, but I can still go up, you see? And still go up here a little bit and come into the right sweet spot. Still a little, little low, a little higher. Now, with valves, of course, I have to pull the first valve slide a little bit because the first valve slide is then too short. It's for A442, not A415, so I have to move this a little bit here. The problem about the second valve slide, it doesn't present itself because the instrument was originally for B-flat A piccolo trumpet that I've cut down to C. It all still plays in B-flat and A, which means the second valve slide is, is, uh, can't be moved, and therefore the intonation works quite well in this combination. Let me see here. And being able to move the third valve slide helps very much so. So I'll come a little bit higher here with the general intonation, that low C. And 
Mike, stay with, with me on the trumpet so that people see what's going on here. I pulled the first valve slide a little bit. It's still tight and it's not leaking or anything. So I'm at 415. So with this piccolo trumpet, I could play with a cembalo in 415 in original Baroque uh, general intonation or pitch, A415. So um, you get the idea of the sound, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do. If I play with a cembalo and other people are playing maybe a, a recorder and they're in, you know, in historical intonation 415, then I can use this trumpet for the Brandenburg or, or playing other pieces like uh, Corelli or uh, Manfredini or whatever. So it's a, a useful kind of a thing. And uh, I think it's kind of nice. I, I worked several concerts with a, a very interesting and very, very talented trumpeter from England named Michael Laird. Michael is, was a, a member of the Philip Brown, Jones Brass Ensemble and um, he also played with several other excellent musicians, including Ed Tarr, but he also played with uh, oh, uh, Donald Smithers. Donald Smithers was also very much an American from upstate New York and uh, traveled quite a lot. He worked with Hanna Kaur and with uh, um, uh, several of, the, uh, uh, several of the, the, the great Baroque initiators of the 50s and 60s and 70s, and he was very much interested in the trumpet acacia which is the real instrument that Bach wrote for when you play in the Clarino Lager. This is also called a Clarino trumpet because of the range that it plays in. Now, of course, this instrument, this instrument is four times longer than that, has a different bell sounds and whatever, and how you create the sound is, is another story altogether. Now, I'll just put this instrument on the stand here in the hopes that, it, that it's, I've got a stable situation that doesn't fall down. There we are. And show you that this instrument is played in a completely different way. Many people try to play just by lipping the notes around them, sort of like, like it's a trumpet, or like a, it's called a Jäger trumpet. There's a Querschnitt Zeichen from a Jäger trumpet. Uh, the, also the German National, uh, Germanische Nationalmuseum in, in Nuremberg. And this is built in 1770, which is like 20 years after Bach died. Now they were still playing Jäger trumpets, and, uh, or Tromba de caccia. Tromba de caccia means Jaeger trumpet in Italian. But uh, the question is how the, these were played. Now that's a, a pretty good instrument. I think I played a, a, a copy of it. And, but talking about intonation again, or going back to this Viviani, um, I'm going to play a little bit of this Viviani. This YouTube is now running out of time, so Mike's holding his hand up. He says, wrap it up, Richard. So uh, I'm going to end this YouTube today by showing you what I'm going to do next time. This is a pretty, pretty nice looking trumpet. It's got angel heads, they're pure silver angel heads that uh, were made by Reini Egger in Basel. And this, this instrument was made without a mandrel. This bell was hand hammered and formed by Mr. Pogense. All this was hand done. I've had a, an extension of this developed through Mr. Cornford. You can see very different bells. Uh, from different uh, modern uh, bells and um, you know, going down to the size of a tromba de caccia uh, so that you can also get a horn sound out of it. But when you come back, <coughs> or when we see this again in the next YouTube, I'm going to play a little bit of this Viviani on this instrument to compare very quickly. These YouTubes are only 15 minutes, so you'll have to excuse me if I sometimes talk a little fast. Thanks for looking in. The man with the horn, Richard Carson Stewart, here in La Tromba Studios in Germany.